Hey everyone, welcome to this episode in the SL project. So this one, we will be removing the valve covers and I've been doing a lot of work on some of the disassembly of things that need to come out from the front of the engine. So we've taken out a lot. We have the thermostat and thermostat housing as well as a hoist bracket that goes across. Uh, the plastic coverings that go here, we already removed the ones on this side. I removed the fan itself, but not the fan clutch over there, which uh, was kind of a pain. I've been told to get the fan out properly and the clutch. You need to remove the radiator, and I started to do that. I figured I could get it, but I did accidentally bend some of the fins there, as you can see. They're not too bad, but it, was, it is a brand new radiator, so I'm kind of upset at myself. I would have liked to not have done that. So. For reassembly, I probably will remove the radiator because all that needs to be removed is that pipe, the transmission pipe, the two coolant pipes down below, and then another transmission one, and it should just slide out. Um, yeah, I just uh, didn't want to do that. <laughs> so, some developments. I've been cleaning tons and tons and tons of engine oil off here, and here you can see those seals. Those could be the culprits but I'm not entirely sure anymore because I just stumbled on a development. So I was drawing the valve cover so I could keep track of the bolts and I had just removed the dipstick bolt and I took my wrench, put it on this bolt and oh, okay, it was loose. Maybe I loosened it. Then I went to this one, it was loose and this one and this one. Okay, so I haven't done this one for a fact. And I'm curious how much effort it's gonna take to loosen that bolt. Oops. All right, that's the first one that needed cracking. I'm gonna put this one loose. Oh my God. <laughs> No force at all. What about this one that's super oily? Oh my god, totally loose. Totally loose. And finally the one back here. Oh my god, not even tight. Unbelievable. No wonder it's leaking everywhere. Those are less than one newton meter of torque. I want to try the right hand side. The passenger. Look at that! Look at that! I didn't even loosen anything! What is going on here? What about this one? Nothing. Wow! Oh my gosh. Barely any torque required to break these loose. That's a ground. Um, wow! Less than... Loose! Completely loose! Unbelievable! I can't believe that. So someone has either been in here, maybe was going to take a look or something and realized the job was bigger than they thought. That's not cool. So that could be a culprit to why there was a lot of oil down there, just really loose valve cover bolts. Okay, so I'm going to remove all those bolts and I'm going to pull off the valve covers. Hopefully they come off without any trouble. Um, hopefully I don't need to pry them off, but because they're seals and they're not RTV, they should come off. The front timing chain covers, which is the next step, do have RTV. And that's going to be a little bit harder. Um, there's a lot more bolts on the front, and hopefully they're torqued all right. I did buy some Holomar, Holomar Blue, Hylomar, however you want to say it, is the Rolls-Royce stuff. And if anything deserves Rolls-Royce, um, products it's the SL and that should give me a nice fresh gasket Hylomar is a non setting RTV replacement I guess and I ordered the seals that go down in there that I showed before the green ones and then you can see the RTV joints here so these t these whole covers come off and I'm hoping that, yeah, some nice blue high Lamar will stop any leaks that could possibly be here. And I'm also gonna use that on the 
oil pan down below because I did put a new gasket on it, but it's been weeping ever since. And I know that the gasket down below has been replaced at least three times, if not four times in this car's history. And that makes me think something is not quite right with the seal down below. And so I think a little Hylomar down there will work. Okay, so I'm gonna put you guys up on time-lapse and I'm gonna hopefully remove these valve covers. Let's go. Okay, we finally got the valve covers off. It took a little bit more wiggling on the first one than I thought, and that's because I'm an idiot and I left two bolts in. So luckily I wasn't prying too hard. I was very gentle with the plastic, uh, plastic trim removal tools. So anyway, here is what a 170,000 kilometer engine, so about 100,000 mile engine looks like. And to me, it looks really good. So we have the timing chain, or the cam, sorry, the cam gear here. And there is like nowhere on the teeth or anything. If we look at the lobes, the cam lobes, they are perfect. It's really hard to tell. There's like a little bit of shininess, maybe, but like nowhere, nothing like that. And I think that's because this does get very regular oil changes, um, something like once every 3,000 kilometers or something like that, basically once a year. And then some additive packages as well. So it looks really good. I'm happy with what I see here. Obviously no sludge or anything like that. The timing chain itself looks in really good condition. Although it's hard to tell what the timing chain stretch could be without actually look doing it. Timing guides themselves look like they're in one piece, but we will see that once we pull off the front timing chain cover. So yes, these covers right here on the front with the cam magnet and everything will come off. That will come off. I think those will be a little bit of a struggle because they're RTV and that there's really nothing to pry against because um, you know you can't put a you can't put anything in there to to pull them off. And I want to be very very careful about it. I'm hoping it can just get yanked off like that. But I want to also make sure it's really clean around the area. So the next step for me, obviously, will be cleaning this gunk off the sides very carefully, very gingerly. I don't want to get anything into the engine itself, but I'm, I'm happy with it so far. This is a lot. There are a lot of parts on there. There are tons and tons of bags of screws that are labeled. We've got the intake and everything. Come over here and we've got the bolts that I just pulled out, some diagrams to help me out later. And just here on the floor, we have the valve covers. You know, pretty crazy to see. They're huge, right? Usually you see one of these on an engine. So these spark plug well seals are still relatively pliable for being 23 years old. I'm assuming they're original. But they're not quite as rubbery as when they first come. They're like a, a lot more gummy. And they just sit um, on the spark plug well. So overall, not too bad. I'm glad these weren't brittle and just cracked into a bajillion pieces and had to fish them out of the engine. That would have been terrible. And then on the un underside, oh yeah, really good condition, really good condition. So the next step here is to remove all the oil from these so they can be powder coated, which will be fun. <laughs> uh, I'm not too worried about it. Hmm. Very cool. All right. 
So everyone, thank you so much for watching this episode. We finally got the valve covers off. It was a lot of work to get there and now we're on the home stretch. So I am ordered some seals and gasket and hoses and there's going to be a lot of reassembly, but to me the reassembly is the more fun part, I guess, because you clean everything as you go. You're making sure everything is torqued properly, unlike the valve covers from the factory and making sure everything is to my standard, which I have a really high standard for my finished work. I wish I could thoroughly clean this engine. Actually, I wish I could remove it and do everything properly, but that's just beyond my budget as well as my capability in my garage. So I'm gonna be taking you on the journey of what's next and as we put it together, but I really hope you enjoyed the SL valve cover gasket saga so far. We'll see you next time.